You go back about 10 years, and music shops and all other types of shops will be sent CD previews of the latest albums to play ready before their release dates and new playlists for the coming seasons. These would then be read by special PCs. Today, given the widespread internet usage of many of these shops, they're pretty redundant. But can these 10-year-old CD players game? This right here is well a CD player. I found it at the boot fair from a slightly dodgy fellow who kept saying this is not a compute but play all his CD and USB file so in case I complain that it doesn't work the way I want it to, I can't get my money back. Regardless of that, this is a PC from Millennium Systems which appears to be made by an odd English OEM and it's not often you see these types of things. But it's always nice to get one of these over on the channel, especially for as low as £5. Not that the price really matters here. Inside we have an Intel Atom D410 CPU, which isn't exactly powerful, having been based on the Pineview architecture, which was in development all the way throughout 2009, eventually leading to its release in very early 2010, with one core and two threads, which are clocked in at 1.66GHz, meaning that it performs sort of like an Intel Pentium M at 1.7GHz from 2004. Not exactly powerful, although it does have a measly 10W TDP, so in that performance envelope it's not too bad. 512MB of RAM is also included, which helps to power the Intel GMA 3150i GPU, which performs roughly the same as today's brilliant Intel GMA 950, which is featured in many older laptops, so not exactly sure why I said today, just most people seem to still be using it today. It is power limited to keep heat down, so it's pretty weak by today's standards, just about giving passable performance if it was released in the 90s, which unfortunately it wasn't. It also comes with a slimline CD player, a generic Intel ITX D410 motherboard, as well as a semi-decent power supply unit, an exhaust fan, and a 120GB Seagate hard disk drive. In other words, a fairly standard affair for being a CD player. Now I only gave this a small clean down, as realistically this thing has been sitting in a shop playing CDs, so very rarely will it have been under load, and I'd imagine given that most shops have constant cleaning, it won't really have any need for being taken apart and thoroughly cleaned. It reminds me sort of a shuttle PC, and I may repurpose the case as it is mini ITX, so it might be quite nice there to have sort of a sleeper type build. I did have to take this inside to finish off putting it back together, as unfortunately it was filmed on the coldest day we've had in March for years, so I woke up to minus 12 degrees and thought you know what now's a good time to film, so yes it was rather cold. It was going to be a little bit hard to put this thing back together I thought, but realistically it's such a nice form factor, and it mostly uses these custom components, so it's pretty much just a standard mini ITX PC with custom components inside, made by a British OEM that no longer exists for the purposes that it had when it made this. Upon the first boot it did tell us that there were some issues with the CMOS battery, which then shortly resolved itself, so I'm guessing this was just an issue with it having been in a scrap pile, taken from the scrap pile, and then later sold at the boot fair, which primarily exists of just stuff taken out of the scrap pile, essentially meaning that it was a PC that just been not used for a while. Eventually, after constant restarts, I couldn't get it to boot anything at all. It wouldn't detect any USB drives, CDs, or even its own hard disk drive, so I went to investigate what was actually going on, so I thought it was an internal issue that I might have missed, and to no one's surprise, I found the issue. The SATA cable was inserted into the socket, but the cable itself was completely broken. I mean, how does that even happen? I don't even... It looks like they've pulled it out and stuck it back in, hoping that it would work. Likely why this CD player was being thrown away. I plugged in a spare hard disk drive I had lying around just to make sure it was the main issue, and sure enough it recognised the hard drive with a fresh SATA cable, which meant that it's time to see what this CD player actually runs operating system wise. Because let's be honest, there is very little documentation on these things and what they actually run and it appears to be running a customised version of Debian. Now, I know a little bit about Linux, so we can get around not having the password and see what sort of capabilities it has, and as we can tell, there's no GUI or anything like that, and from a practicality standpoint, there is nothing but a lot of errors, which we have to report to the Mono team, report it to the Mono team, who I don't think actually exist. But once past all these errors, we inserted the disc it came with, which was meant to be disposed of years ago and actually came from Cafe Nero, so at least we know where this thing's from. 
and as we can see, this thing began to actually play some music decently well. I can't actually show it as it is copyrighted jazz for some reason, so we can tell where it came from. The audio came from the actual outputs present on the PC and quality was decent, nothing spectacular, but realistically that's enough about the Linux side of things, there isn't much more you can do on this other than insert CD players and play CDs. So in terms of actual gaming we need to get an operating system onto it, which may have been the most infuriating thing I've ever had to try and do. Now the BIOS on this thing seems to be very locked down, as even attempting to update it or get it to boot from anything else, it's just impossible, it wouldn't let me even do anything to it purely because of how locked down it is, as clearly they didn't want people messing up their CD player in store. Despite this I did try loading Windows XP onto a memory stick on my main PC as it refused to boot from that. I tried multiple memory sticks and anything like that and realistically it just won't boot to any external devices, so I thought why not give it a go, it's a CD player, why not burn Windows XP to a CD? Maybe then it'll be able to read it. So I turned on the £12 Trash Mac, video pending, I might do a video on it, it's not really that entertaining, and burnt the ISO to a CD to try. So after countless times opening and closing the disk drive and timing when I could get away with reconnecting the hard drive, resetting it, and hoping to hell that it would actually post, as realistically without a hard drive attached it refuses to even show anything, this PC is just weird at this point, so eventually I got it to get to a Windows XP installation screen, which then promptly failed. So I managed to get it to install by being as quick as possible with the install and just hoping to hell that it would make it through it. The rest of the setup is extremely self-explanatory as it's just Windows XP, which should work fairly well given the mediocre specs of this CD player PC type thing, especially considering the RAM constraints as otherwise I would have loved to have used Windows 7, but considering our iGPU will be chewing away at that RAM as well, it's just not worth the risk. So given that we have this entire CD player up and running using the drivers that I grabbed off Intel's website, just how well does it perform doing basic day to day tasks? Well, general desktop usage was nice and speedy, likely due to the CPU performing very similarly to a decently clocked Intel Pentium M chip while maintaining the use of its hyperthreading, which was a massive help while moving around files, unzipping them and multitasking in general, which was actually quite doable on this PC. Web browsing works okay using an older version of Chrome, as usually I opt for the Opera browser, but the mirror on the internet was down, so I just opted for this version of Chrome that I had lying around, which browsed the internet just fine and as expected, YouTube was slow and you're limited to 360p video at best, but other sites loaded in fine and you can get around using it for actual web browsing purposes, just as long as you don't mind being unprotected and unsecure on Windows XP. But how does this relate to real world gaming performance? Let's find out in the benchmarks. Starting us off with Half-Life 2 which ran well awfully at an average of 18 FPS with 1% lows of 5 FPS and 0.1% lows down to 2 FPS. This was with the lowest settings possible in 480p with the DX 8.1 renderer being enabled. Water didn't display correctly despite whatever version of DirectX I was using, chaining the drivers made absolutely no difference, and dedicating more or less VRAM to the iGPU also didn't change anything at all. So really, I think this is a lack of RAM in the system in general that you might have to blame. And you'll have to make some serious tweaks to get this playable. Likely using an older version of the engine might help you out a tad, and increasing the RAM definitely will. Or, you know, just don't play the game on a CD player. Far Cry, which was essentially the crisis of its day, seemed to be running okay, and I thought that I'd found something that would finally run okay. But generally this wasn't the case, inside the starting area it was fine, but as soon as we got outside of that the frame rate began to fluctuate and hardly anything loaded in. But I suppose if you like a challenge and have sort of muscle memory of the game and know where everything is you might be able to call this a sort of hard mode. Realistically though it wasn't playable and I think this is likely to do with the system RAM and the fact that the iGPU is having to share from this and we only have half a gigabyte of it, so it ends up not working too well. Halo Combat of old ran pretty well with an average of 29 FPS and some borderline acceptable frame times. However, there were no bullets being shown on screen regardless of what settings, drivers, VRAM amounts were used. Trust me, I tried and nothing would fix this. So essentially it did look rather odd, and I was trying to pinpoint what fell off until it hit me, the fact that I was literally just staring enemies to death instead of shooting them, so it sort of felt like you were giving them a death stare and then they just kill over and die. Which I can assure you is not the normal way to play Halo. 
Morrowind was one of the few games that was perfectly playable with an average of 29 FPS, 14 FPS 1% lows and 0.1% lows down to 7 FPS. It was very reminiscent of the original Xbox version of the game and clearly benefited from the additional RAM and the Atom CPU which was actually superior to that of the original Xbox console. I mean these games sort of don't really need much graphical power and it's annoying that the iGPU is weak but really it copes ok with the low resolution and graphical settings we're using. The PCI slot doesn't really leave as much room for an upgrade choice so unless I decide to track down the legendary GT610 for the PCI slot this is the sort of gaming you can expect on this PC. Doom 3 had absolutely no issues. Aside from the unplayable frame rate of 9 FPS on average and the terrible frame times to boot. I won't exactly say there's going to be much you can do to improve this as realistically without being able to add a proper graphics card, Doom 3 is quite an intensive little game and much more strenuous on a system like this than the likes of Half-Life 2 which with a few tweaks you could likely get to work. But then again, either of them are not really ideal to be played on a CD player and I'd recommend just putting them on anything instead. And can it run Crisis? No, it doesn't even start. I tried a ton of different drivers, different settings, but Crisis will just not start on this system. Even in 640x480 with 256 colors enabled, it was just too strenuous to load the opening scenes and would simply just crash. Once again, this is probably down to the lack of system RAM as well as a dedicated graphics card. Maybe one day I'll return to upgrade it to make a CD player run Crisis, but for now, no, you will not be playing Crisis on a CD player. The most taxing games like Minesweeper did however work on a system like this completely fine with a fluent 60fps on average. However, given the intensity of games like this, the frame times were only just borderline playable and as we know Minesweeper is very difficult to run. The same goes for the likes of Pinball which although he managed to achieve a 60fps on average, can you maintain the power long enough to keep playing that? And yes, yes you can, so that rounds off our benchmarks. Of course, pretty much any original Xbox era games are sort of playable, but realistically this isn't a gaming machine. So in conclusion, can we game on a 10 year old CD player? Yes we can. Can we play music on a 10 year old CD player? Yes we can do that as well. Realistically this thing has been a pain in the ass from the moment I got it, but it's fascinating to see just how locked down it is. I tried to perform a BIOS update, which even then was rejected by the system. So I'm assuming the manufacturers have tried to keep these things locked down so they can only play back the media the shops they came from needed, in this case Cafe Nero. Regardless, with some clever timing with inserting discs and reconnecting hard drives, we managed to get the PC to install another operating system, which took far longer than it seemed in this video. The case uses a basic mini ITX form factor, so I'm really tempted to turn this into a little CD PC sleeper system. Of course, I would like to track down some upgrades if possible, but I have a feeling trying to get hold of a GT610 on the PCI bus is going to be hard and expensive, but I'll keep my eye out for one. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. Thank you very much for watching. This video sure has been a pain in the ass, but it's been fun nonetheless. However, there is plenty more unique and helpful content on the way, so do like and subscribe for more like that.